And let's start setting these up. So first, I'm going to go to my Mass Effects toolbar. It's up here. Yours probably won't be there. I'm just going to drag mine off so you can use it better. So what you do is you right click on here and you'll click Mass Effects toolbar. Or if you don't see it there, you go under Views, under uh, Toolbars, if I can find that. Customize, Show UI. Yeah, sorry. So it's under Customize, Show UI, and then Show Floating Toolbars. And you'll have to check that off. Mass Effects will pop up as one of them, and there will be a bunch of other ones that pop up as close to those that we won't use them. But that's what you want, Show Floating Toolbars. All right, so now we got the Mass Effects here. I will select my backplane, my box one, which is, as you can see, the frame of our mirror. And we will go under Options, Edit, Rigid Body Type. Well, oh, first we have to assign a rigid body to it. So we go here, and we go Set Selected as Static Rigid Body. So static rigid bodies have no real effect on any dynamics except that they're just there for dynamics to hit. They will not move themselves, they are static. Stuff can hit it, stuff will hit it, stuff will bounce off of it, but it does not move. As static very, very soundly says. Static does not move. Now we'll go under Mass Effects Tools dialog, just clicking this button over here, and under Edit Plane. So it's going to be a static rigid body. We will use gravity, it doesn't really matter because it's static. Collide with rigid bodies again, doesn't matter because it's static. I just have it checked on so rigid bodies can collide with it. And we will say it will be but a limestone back. Gives us a nice little density preset and mass preset. I mean, you can unlock that and actually change around stuff, but I usually find limestone the best. It's not necessarily about being realistic, it's about what looks proper, which is kind of weird, but it works. And our mesh type I will set to original because if we have, you probably will be set to convex. And I'll go over this a bit later but I will set it to original because of the inset we have and I'll tell you why original works and convex will not work. All right, so now let's select these mirror pieces. And as I said before, make sure when you're breaking it down, use a uniform color to break it down into. So you can easily go edit, select by color, select it, and it selects every piece of that color that we broke it down into. Very easy way to select stuff, very fast, very useful and we'll set those as dynamic rigid bodies. Now, as you see, going back into our edit mode, they're dynamic, we'll start in sleep mode. This allows us to not, these things not to move until something acts upon it. So when the, they will not be dynamic rigid bodies until the ball hits it. Before then, they'll just be static rigid bodies. And this is very useful because we have gravity turned on, as you can see up here, gravity will be turned on. And if we didn't have the start and sleep mode selected, Gravity would pull them down before the ball actually even hit. So actually, I can show you this a bit later. So we'll turn start and sleep mode off. I'll just This is just for showing you how it works. Uh, preset cardboard I find works best for mirrors. I don't know why, it just does. And this mesh type will be original. As you see, when it was convex, you can see all these blue lines. This is the bounding box for the mesh collisions. And they're not actually perfect around every object. So this will cause some breaking and some exploding in places we don't want to. So we'll just set it to original. It sets the mesh size and the mesh outlines to be the outlines of the actual collisions and the dynamics that we will put on these objects. So we'll set the mesh type to original. And again, we have start and sleep mode turned off just for the purpose of a demonstration. I'll press play. And as you can see, everything kind of breaks and falls before a ball even hits it. So that just doesn't look properly. I kind of like that way being kind of stuck up there, it's kind of funny, but I don't like it as good as I will when starting to sleep mode turns off. So we'll reset our animation, our simulation, sorry, not animation. Click start in sleep mode, and as you can see, nothing happens. No matter what, your timeline's going by, nothing happens. So we'll reset you, unselect all of these, and it looks like our meshes and excuse me, our meshes and our dynamics are proper right now. So the next thing we will do is use a kinematic body type, excuse me, a kinematic body type for the ball to hit the smaller areas and explode the mirror itself. So let's go to our ball. First we will animate out a 
quick sequence of it just flying through the air. So I have to kind of think about this. That's zero, and that is about negative 146 inches. So that's about 10 feet. Well, okay, 12. 12 feet. And I can see a ball traveling 12 feet in half a second. So we go to frame 15, turn auto key on, drag you over until it almost collides. And about there. So it collides about there. And as well, because I like a bit of an arc to my ball, I'm going to drop this ball down to about there at zero frame. So it just goes up like that, and over 15 frames. Now, as you can tell, it slows down before it hits. This is not good. This has always been a problem. Even I've been screwed over by this a few times. And it's because the default setting for every animation is slow in, slow out. So, it just makes it smoother. So what I do, so it doesn't slow down, we just select all the keyframes, and we hit select tangents, set tangents to linear. So therefore it's a straight line, it doesn't lose speed at the end, it doesn't lose speed at the start, it just goes straight. And I just got to that mini curve editor through this button down here. Mini curve editor, and it's right here, and I close it out. Alright, so we have the ball flying towards it, and I'll turn auto key off. But as you can see, nothing happens. That ball does absolutely nothing, even when we play the simulation. Nothing. So, what we want to do is set this to be a kinematic rigid body type. This allows us to have animation on this rigid body before it becomes a dynamic rigid body, or we can actually turn it never to become a dynamic rigid body, but we want it to become a dynamic rigid body so it actually bounces properly after it hits a mirror. So, we go under our edit display right here, kinematic body type, and we want this to be kinematic so we want it to follow the keyframe animation that we made up to frame 15. And then it will become a dynamic rigid body like these pieces and it will explode, fall, roll, and do everything that it does through the Mass Effect tools. And I'll set this to be about a concrete ball, so it's going to be a heavy, heavy ball. Uh, mesh type, I don't want convex again, but this is a sphere, perfect sphere, because I made it a perfect sphere. And just use sphere, it's very easy for the whole Mass Effects to calculate, and make sure the radius is the same size as your sphere radius right here. So sphere radius of 2.5, and radius of 2.5, so this just nicely fits over top of your sphere. As you can see, the mesh renderer and the show and what shows us uh, that is our sorry and the outline of our rigid body. These measured by these orange things, shown by these orange outlines, are is very very close and can show each other that it is right on top of one another. All right, so. We've set up our dynamics for this. We've set this up to be static. We are using the ground plane, the zero plane, as the bottom. So we really don't need to uh, set this as, as this as a static body type because the ball will hit right here. However, what we do want to do is select everything in our scene. So let's select this. Well, select our mirror in our scene. Select your ground plane. Select everything else. Oh, okay. Select everything. Just using control, hold down, and move this up so the ground, so the plane intersects is a zero ground plane right here. This is because I am using the under world. I'm using the ground plane, so this allows us to use the ground plane that 3ds Max has as the actual ground. So something will bounce off of it. You can turn this off and then set your plane down here to be a static body type, but I really, you don't need to for something this simple. However, if we do more tutorials like this, I'll most likely turn the ground plane off and then use my own ground plane and just set it as a static. And we got gravity enabled. That is our acceleration in feet and inches. I don't actually know that. I only know it through meters. However, that is, I'm assuming, proper since it is default. All right, so we have everything set up. We can turn on close out our Mass Effects tool dialog, and let's try the simulation. So we press play, you see it hits, kind of breaks, not really fast, I kind of want it to be faster breaking. So I've had this problem before and it's a very, very simple fix. And because this is flying out so fast, it just kind of goes through it before it has any, any possibility to do anything to the mirror. So our first thing we can do is make our sphere bigger, so let's go about three and make sure that we set our radius here 
to be bigger so it actually collides with the bigger mesh. Make sure they match again. Uh, you can also, yeah, so you can use your Mass Effects rigid bodies. You can change them around here in the Modify panel or you can do it in the Options panel. If you want to do multiple bodies at the same time, use this Mass Effects Tools dialog box. If you just want to do one at a time like we were with this, just use your Modify panel, which is very simple and always available. All right, so let's reset the simulation and pull this back and press play. And there it goes, it shatters a bit faster, ground plane falls, and you can see the smaller pieces just shattering off. That just was an old piece, but a lot of dynamics is just trial and error. So what I'm going to do now actually is select my select my mirror itself, select by color, click my mirror, open up my Mass Effects Tools dialog box, and under edit I might not want to use cardboard. Let's try something like uh, well, cardboard, let's unlock this. And put a bit of a density to it. So that's about 1.5. 1.5. And let's try this again. Reset our simulation, press play. And kind of falls the same way. It's just the way my procedural broke up, but I kind of I like it, especially with that end piece. I really like how that worked out. All right, so we will reset our simulation, and let's start thinking about the materials and rendering. And after that, we will go back, bake all our animations, and then we will render it out. So, for materials. I will open up the material editor. It'll, mine opens up automatically in Slate 3S Max 12 2012 should open up. However, you have it in the compact slate or the compact material editor, just go under modes, go to slate material editor, and this will pop up. This is probably the fastest way I've seen it. I used to like the compact, but this is much better. So we will use a quick mental ray mirror. This will be for our mirror, of course. Just default settings work perfectly fine. We have these options for the mental ray materials, mental ray, because I turned on my mental ray renderer. If you remember back when I turned on the mental ray renderer down here. So if you don't have this option for mental ray materials, go down here to assign renderer and turn on the mental ray renderer by just clicking these three dots and then selecting it from the list. I'll close that out. And now I will make the frame. So a quick mental ray architecture and design material and a good wood material I find is 2 reflectivity or 0.2 reflectivity and 0.25 glossiness and then I turn on IOR reflections because they're actual fractional reflections and that's the actual way light and reflections work in the real world. Now we will go to color there's a little dialog box here open up the dialog box and select the bitmap color for a diffuse and I will navigate to right here. And thankfully it was in my history. So navigate to wherever you installed your never installed 3ds Max program files for me. Go under common files, Autodesk shared, materials, then textures, then number three, and then mats. And this should get you to this area right here. Now I will select Beachwood Whiskey because I like it. And make sure you use system default gamma. This is very important for lighting and for your gamma and LUT setup. However, I have not gone into this, but just for my, just take my word for it right now, make sure you use system default gamma. It makes it so it's not washed out. I will explain that in a different tutorial. Okay. And we have a bitmap in there now. And just quickly drag and drop this onto the frame. I will minimize out my. Oh, first I will show a change of material and viewport. Minimize out my slate material editor and put a quick UVW map on this, so I can quickly make it look sort of proper. So about five tiling on the U, five tiling on the V, makes it a bit cleaner. Looks all right. Doesn't really need to be too perfect. All right. So now let's open up this again. Go under materials, under mental ray. Another architecture and design. This is just going to be a gray material with no reflectivity or glossiness. And this will just be for the ball and for the ground plan. So it will drag you on. Assign to selection because I set it to both. And it just is there now. So we can do a quick little render. 
And there you go. It doesn't have any lighting on it, so it doesn't look at all impressive. Especially this doesn't even look like a mirror like this, so we'll close you out. Put the ball in thing so you can actually see the ball in the mirror. I'll close up my material editor since you don't need that anymore. And there, yeah, you can see the ball right here. It looks